Hi everyone, I just thought I'd make a quick video to explain some points about the German electrical VDM propeller pitch control mechanism which was fitted to a number of Second World War German aircraft but I'll focus on the manual system as used in the Messerschmitt 109. The VDM system initially only came in manual control form which meant that the pilot had to do all the propeller pitch control management. As the war progressed, 109E started to be fitted and retrofitted with a new automatic system and we'll look into that in another video. The electric VDM system was produced to compete with the American Hamilton Standard Hydromatic Pitch Propeller Control System and differed from most other propeller hub and pitch control systems in that the centre of the hub was hollow so that it could be fitted to engines with centrally mounted engine armament such as the DB600 series of engines. This resulted in the need for the propeller pitch control system to be remotely located as opposed to be located in the hub as it was in most systems. In this video I won't go into exactly how the gearbox for the pitch control mechanism works as that's quite complicated, but instead we'll look at all the electrical components up to the gearbox and I'll just say that if you rotate the prop pitch gearbox in one direction it will coarsen the propeller blades and if you rotate the gearbox in the other direction it will fine the blades pitch. So let's look at some of the components for the manual system. Overall the system is quite simple and only consists of a few core items. The main items we can see are the motor type looking device, what looks to be a clock and some sort of switch. The motor type device is a propeller pitch control motor which sits under the engine. The clock is the cockpit indicator that shows the pilot the propeller blade pitch and the switch is the cockpit control switch that allows the pilot to increase or to decrease the propeller blade pitch. The first item we'll look at is this large motor looking device. This item sits nestled underneath the engine of the DB605 and sits on the side of the DB601 and it is an electrical propeller pitch control motor. Early 601s were fitted with a small simple device in this one, however we will look at this slightly later device which is called 9 Heights for Stelgerat or EVG. The EVG's functions were to rotate the propeller pitch control gearbox in one direction or the other, relay the pitch indication to the cockpit and to control the endpoints for the propeller pitch motor so that it didn't drive the prop blades too fine or too coarse. The earlier prop motor had to have a separate device to control the propeller pitch endpoints and relay the prop pitch to the cockpit but the EVG combined them into one neat package. We can see off one end of the EVG a connection goes off onto a short drive which connects to the propeller pitch control gearbox and drives the blade to coarser or finer depending on which direction the motor rotates. The other side connects to a long flexible drive which travels through the aircraft through a couple of connections and through the firewall to the prop pitch indicator in the cockpit which then displays the prop pitch to the pilot. At the cockpit side of the EVG underneath this silver cover is a very complex clockwork mechanism that controls how long the motor will run for in one direction or the other so that we do not run the propeller blades too fine or too coarse. We can also reverse the direction that the motor runs if needed as the EVG can be fitted to both clockwise and anti-clockwise rotating engines. For the pilot to control the EVG we would find the next item which is a downman shelter or thumb switch and this is a switch that allows the pilot to alter the prop pitch. It is a simple electrical switch that connects through the firewall to the EVG and commands it to either rotate in one direction or the other depending on the side of the button that is pressed. As we mentioned earlier, the direction of rotation of the prop pitch motor either turns the gearbox to increase the propeller pitch or decrease the propeller pitch. In early 109s this switch was only a throw switch attached to the instrument panel but as it became clear that flying an aircraft in combat and moving your hand off the throttle to change the prop pitch was not practical, the Germans moved the switch onto the end of the throttle so all the pilot had to do was move his thumb up or down to increase or decrease the prop pitch. In effect, this is an early form of HOTAS or hand-on throttle and stick, something the Americans and British thought they invented about 20 years later. We can see that the downman shelter is marked Dresal, Grosser and Kleiner. Dresal means RPM and in this case engine RPM. Grosser means bigger and Kleiner means smaller. So this means if we push the switch towards the bigger side, the engine RPM will increase and if we push it towards the smaller side, the engine RPM will decrease. Now a decrease in engine RPM means an increase in propeller pitch or coarsening the propeller blades and an increase in engine RPM means a decrease in propeller pitch and a fining of the propeller blades. We mentioned earlier that the EVG was fitted with a clockwork mechanism that only allowed the motor to rotate so far one way before it reached an endpoint and stopped. These endpoints apply to both the fine and the coarse direction so that if the pilot holds down the decrease engine RPM side the motor will only run until it reaches its maximum course setting and then will stop, no matter if the pilot continues to hold down the decrease RPM button. The same goes for the increase RPM button. We can hold it down as long as we want, but the motor will only run in the fine direction until it hits the preset end stop and then the motor will stop. 
This is a protection mechanism that keeps the prop blades pitched within a preset range of pitches. In the 605A on the 109G, this was from 22 degrees fine to 70 degrees coarse. The last item we have to look at in the manual system is the prop pitch indicator or Luftschrauber Stellungsanzeiger. Now this little clock looking instrument is often misunderstood and certainly in some of the British intelligence reports describing the VDM prop pitch control system, they could not understand the point of the instrument and wrongly thought that it was an unrequired extravagance. So when we look at this indicator, what can we see? Well, we can see a clock dial with no numerical markings, but we can see an hour and minute markings. And we can also see that it does appear to have an hour and a minute hand. On the back, we can see a drive connection and a switch to select either A or B. We know already that the connection on the back connects to the rear side of the EVG and through the drive relays the pitch of the blades to the clock. The A and B switch selects which direction the clock rotates, which we use when we are installing the system in the aircraft. So how does this instrument relate to the prop pitch and controlling the engine in a 109? Well, when flying an aircraft, a pilot does not really need to know the exact degrees of the prop's pitch. He just needs to know what indications on the instrument relate to the selection that he wants. This same thinking is used in aircraft like the modern Airbuses, in which the pilot does not need to know what exact degrees of flap and slats he is selecting. He just needs to know when he needs flaps 1 or flaps 2. And so there are no markings on the face of the clock. Instead, it is red just like a normal clock. For example, 10.30, 12.30, 4.30, etc. If we push the thumb switch down on bigger RPM, we can see that the clock rotates clockwise to its maximum reading of 12.30, which is fully fine on the prop pitch, and we know this to be about 22 degrees on a 109. If the pilot holds the thumb switch down to the smaller RPM side, the clock rotates all the way round anti-clockwise to 4.30 and stops. This indicates that the propeller is now fully coarse, and we know that the blade pitch will be around 70 degrees. Each 10 minute mark on the face of the clock equals one degree of pitch, and the clock moves at 1.5 degrees per second. So each hour of clock movement is equal to 6 degrees of blade pitch and it will take 32 seconds to travel from full fine to full course when the system is fitted to the aircraft. When the DB600 series of engines were initially designed, the engineers would have spent many hours running and testing the engines to work out and chart the optimum engine manifold pressure to engine RPM relationship for various conditions of flight, so that they could produce tables illustrating this relationship. This information was then passed on to the pilots who would learn these tables so that they could operate the engines most efficiently. For example, a pilot would know that if he set 1.42 ATA on the manifold pressure gauge and set the prop pitch so that the engine was rotating at 2800 RPM, he would be operating the engine most efficiently, in this case operating at emergency power. The relationship table for manifold pressure to engine RPM for a 109G with a DB605A was as follows. Most economic setting, 1.05 ATA, 2100 RPM. Maximum continuous power, 1.15 ATA, 2300 RPM. Climbing and fighting power, 1.30 ATA, 2600 RPM. And takeoff and emergency power, 1.42 ATA, 2800 RPM. The pilot would know which clock times on the prop pitch clock would give him the required engine RPM once the airspeed had stabilised at his desired manifold power setting, and he would fly with these settings in mind. During a dogfight, however, as speed increased or decreased, if the pilot did not coarsen or fine the propeller blades to match the speed change, he would find that the engine RPM decreased or increased, even if the manifold pressure stayed the same. This would mean that the optimum relationship between manifold pressure and engine RPM would break down, and the engine would not be operating as efficiently as it could for the manifold pressure setting. This meant that the pilot had to be extremely careful to constantly watch the engine RPM and alter the blade pitch accordingly through the thumb switch. As you can imagine, this is very difficult in a dogfight, and so the risk of overspeeding the engine with a manual propeller pitch control system is very high, and it is also unlikely that the pilot will be able to maintain the correct ratio of manifold pressure to engine RPM for any significant length of time. This is why, when the later automatic system was introduced, it greatly reduced the pilot's workload. Another reason for the requirement for the prop pitch clock, and one that the British investigators failed to appreciate when they evaluated the system in the Second World War, is that in most aircraft with variable pitch propeller systems, the pilot uses a lever rather than a thumb switch to control the engine RPM. With a lever, the blade position can be easily seen by the lever angle, and for starting the lever can be set in a suitable position. With a thumb switch, the pilot has no idea of what position the propeller blades are in, and so requires an indication of some sort, in this case a clock. For example, if we started an aircraft with a propeller pitch lever, we would set the lever to the fine position and start the aircraft. With a thumb switch, the pilot wouldn't be able to tell the position the blades are in unless he had the clock. In the case of the 109G, the pilot would turn on the electrics, set the clock to 12 o'clock, 25 degrees blade pitch, which is a normal fine position for the 109, and then start the engine. 
I hope this little explanation has given you some idea of how the manual VDM propeller pitch system worked and what sort of indications and methods of operation were used to control it. In my next video, we'll look at the much more advanced automatic system, but until then, thanks for watching.